you know, it's very interesting. The first time I, I consciously heard, I'm, it might, it must have been also earlier, but when I consciously knew that it is Gustav Mahler, was was his first symphony. And the reason was interesting because I I was very much interested in nature, you know, music about nature and uh, about sounds of nature. I had the recordings of of you know the water sounds or of, of bird songs or and then I asked somebody what, what you can recommend as a music to listen to if I like that, that kind of music just for interest and he was not a musician he told well there is a he gave me a tape and he told well there is one composer he forgot the name but and and, and it was Mahler first symphony and you know the beginning of the first which is this this chord of strings, it's a sound of nature, you know, absolutely. And the clarinet, all this, and I found, and this was the first piece of Mahler. And I think I was maybe twelve years old, eleven years old, when I heard uh, that symphony. I have conducted all of the symphonies so far except seven. I'm conducting nine for the first time next month. Next, in, 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 so in, in, in February. So, from one hand, it's, you know, I'm only 31 years old at the moment. But, you know, this music speaks so closely to me that I think. I don't agree. Sometimes if people say, "Well, well, Mahler, okay, so you have to be careful. You shouldn't take it because it's it's about you, you don't understand it, or you should take it very late." Because I mean, I I part I partly agree because, of course, by the experience of life, experience of conducting, experience of meeting, orchestras, experiencing life mostly, you understand more and more about that. But I think. There is no limitation about age or nationality or even religion for his music because there's everything in his music. It's starting from naive childness up to the biggest catastrophe, biggest cataclysm, apocalypse. You know, it's everything in his symphonies is a whole world. It's from the people who are very emotional who think that the music is the essence of emotions, it's maybe like me in a way, they find in his music everything for their soul. The people who think the music is about the mathematic and about brain, they also find everything in all his music. So it's very interesting, you can watch and look to his music from different perspectives. There is a combination of so many things in his music. And when you look to, for example, Bernstein conducting Mahler, I think I think it's a it's an amazing example of maybe what it meant to Bernstein that every note, as he told, every note we need to squeeze out from every note the tension and the dramatism and and suffer or love. It's from every every note is very important for Mahler. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And I think that's. When you see him, there are of course um, so different ways as well, so different conductors conducting, and it all works. It works. You know, you, know, you see, Maestro Boulet is absolutely doing it differently than it, you see the Bernstein or Maris Sanson or or, or, or um, Simon Rattle or or Barry, all these great, fantastic conductors, but they all do it differently. And you you can't say this is right, this is wrong. It's never or Haitink or. But this is all, all great. They have all personal relations to Mahler, and I think that's the most important that Mahler gives uh, us. That I think he wants to have the personal relation to his music for each artist, for each conductor, and I think that you can never say this is a right or wrong way. I al I always believe uh, there will be always somebody who would not agree to the way you do. And there's somebody always who would think differently, but it is absolutely normal, I think. That's the richness of of the vision of, of his music, I think. And
I mean, of course, as, as Malay was a great conductor, he is helping a lot, putting the markings in the score, balancing. He is really great in balancing, for example, because what is dangerous also when you conduct, let's say, there is a place where everything is, sounds very loud, you know, and you conduct a big gesture, everything can be a little too loud or you don't understand what happens. But you know, he writes in the score, let's say for trumpets, he writes forte piano, for first violins, he writes forte, for cellos, he writes mezzo piano. So he balances the orchestra himself. And that's a challenge how you manage to make the balance with the, with the conducting, because if you don't manage to encourage the musicians to play the way it's written, then it's provocating to be everything extremely, sometimes extremely loud and extremely, uh, you know, thick. But he was so, of course, genius as an instrumentator, he put so many markings in the score. And that's one of the difficulties, I think, for conducting uh, Uh, from, another, from the other hand, I think the combination between the chamber music, what is so present in all his symphonies, and a huge, gigantic culmination with the explosions, and in your conducting technically to find and to encourage to see that difference. Where is a chamber music moment where you shouldn't disturb <laughs> the music? You never should disturb the music as a conductor, but and where you need to mobilize and to go for a dramatic culmination and to find where is culmination number one, number two, and where is the goal and whether there is a goal. Sometimes we don't reach. In the first movement, particularly, there are so many combinations. You have one combination, the fortissimo, another, third, fourth, and you... If you think that this is the goal, one time, second time, you know, it's like doing the 200 one time, but you think, oh my God, it doesn't, it doesn't work if you do that. It, so you should always... I think Mala doesn't want you to, do, to, to go till the end. I, I found it for myself because otherwise you go one time oh it's nice oh but I think he doesn't he wants you to and to be to go almost to succeed but no and no not yet and second time and then at the end only at the very end you succeed that so you need to keep to have this is I think difficulty to find for one of the difficulties to find the uh, to balance the culminations emotionally and purely technically. But about Fifth Symphony, I want to ask about Adagietta, about the timing of that and what he really meant about that. Because there's so many discussions. Some say that actually he was performing on piano just over seven minutes. There's a recording of Bernstein, which is maybe 13, or if I'm not mistaken. And there is tradition to have it very slow. And very romantic and very, which is beautiful, and maybe which the body prefers and the inside the soul. When you read about him, I mean, you read his letters, you know, his letters to Alma, which are very su sweet, and and then you you really read about him that he he actually was quite quite nervous and quite dictate with a tough man. But when you see the symphonies, you can see that this struggle between the extremely sincere and man who loves and the man who is explosive and and I would like to meet to meet him and to I think if I would have a chance to, to talk to him just for a minute to see what is it it would help much to understand the Mahler he's not accepting life how, how it is he is He's enjoying life in a, in a moment when it's happy, and then he writes this, 
this adagietta or the last movement of the fifth symphony, which is or the eighth symphony, first movement, and you think, oh, or he's laughing about it, eh, you know, the, the sarcastic, sarcastic, he's laughing. But one, but there is a day where he's the saddest, he's the most dramatic person, you know, I don't know, the first moment of, of fifth symphony or, or, or sixth symphony or any of Trauer Marsh, you know, then you see he's the most unhappy. He's not accepting life as it is. He's, he's looking and asking uh, the questions. Why it is like this? Why, I'm, why is the situation that I'm not happy? Why I have these problems? And uh, how I can escape? And what is wrong with life? What is wrong with religion? What is wrong with our attitude to life? What is wrong with the political world? Why we can't everything can be great. He wants to show the world, I have a problem, I don't know what is the question of life. Ta -da 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 He's not, he won't, oh sorry, Brahms wouldn't say this, he, for example, he would say, and he's not shy to say that, and, and he even enjoys, there's a pain, and you know, the fourth symphony, a slow movement is so squeezing out the the nostalgia or the melancholism in a good way, but you know, it's almost he listening to that music. You you can get a heart attack because it's so beautiful, so touching. Or last moment of third symphony. It is killing, killingly touching, emotional, and he knows he he destroys his heart with with that. Music, because to listen to that music, you, you, you feel sick, in a, in not in a bad sense, but really you're all you exhausted. You can, you can't sleep at night. When you leave. But that, and this maybe what what maybe brought him to his heart problem, of course. Not only this, of course, but some who would be all well, please relax, don't be, you know. But he he was going hundred percent with his uh, with his emotionality. I think.